last class we had discussed about various type of electrochemical cells we had discussed about ganglion cell we had understood how the electrochemical cell works we had drawn a picture we had drawn a diagram of a ganglion cell having zinc and copper electrode there we have shown how it works we have discussed the work of salt bridge role of salt bridge also how it maintains the electrical neutrality of cell and at last we had gone through the notation or the process to represent an electrochemical cell there were some rules maintaining the rules we have understood how to draw it now we have written this topic the representation of electrochemical cell because today also we are going to carry forward our discussion based on the last this topic only so we will choose some electrochemical cell and we will be noting it down with the help of those rules how it should be represented so let us see that so just as a reminder if you see in the last day's discussion there in a representation we had drawn like this zinc followed by zn2 plus and here it was connected with copper 2 plus followed by copper metal and in between the salt bridge was written the salt bridge was written so you can call it salt bridge this one this is salt bridge here what happens is zinc is losing two electron and here what happens copper 2 plus accepts two electron to become copper here it is anode because it is oxidation which takes place and here it is of course cathode and the reduction is taking place and the flow of current the flow of current first of all the flow of electrons the electron was flowing from left to right and subsequently the current was flowing from right to left so it is the electricity so this is how the electrochemical cell should be represented just a quick reminder salt bridge should be in between zinc metallic first of all anode anode should be on the left hand side cathode should be on the right hand side the metal followed by the electrolyte on the anode side and cathode in cathode the electrolyte followed by the metal so based on that we are going to choose some cell and we are going to write it down so first you note it down once again it's a memory aid you can say hmm. and accordingly we will continue now we are going to see the representation of some common electrochemical cell so as an example first we will choose the copper AgNO3 cell so to understand this first we are going to see the reactions okay so first we are going to write down the probable reactions so there are two half equations copper what it can do is copper can lose two electrons to become copper 2 plus and silver nitrate it is in ag plus state so what it will do is ag plus will accept electron and will become silver ag so if you want to see the overall cell reaction you have to multiply this one by 2 so it should be like this copper giving rise to copper 2 plus plus 2 electron here it should be multiplied by 2 so it should be 2 ag plus plus 2 electron 
giving rise to to a so it will cancel each other out and we should be able to write this one giving rise to cu2 plus plus now the fact is what we are supposed to understand from here first of all copper giving rise to copper 2 plus plus 2 electron it is definitely oxidation and silver plus accepting electron obviously is reduction so which one should be chosen as cathode we know the reduction occurs so this one is cathode And this one is anode. So cathode and anode we have chosen. We have determined which one is what. So let us mention. So this one is cathode. And this one is anode. I hope it is clear till now. Now we are going to represent the cell. Remember the last discussion. So, if I am supposed to write it on the left hand side, first I should be able to write the metal. The metal is metal present on the anode side. So, on the left hand side, we should be drawing, we should be writing the metal of anode, which is copper. Then, you can mention it is in solid state. Then, followed by copper 2 plus is obviously solution now here comes the salt bridge now the salt bridge will come continued by the anode cathode part where the electrolyte should be written first ag plus now ag plus is in aqueous medium followed by ag which is so this is how the cell should be represented and from here only if you see from here only we can we will be able to calculate what is happening from this information only forget about the right right hand side part copper copper 2 plus means it is anode an oxidation so copper will be losing two electron to giving rise to copper 2 plus which I have drawn, written rather. Then salt bridge of course followed by Ag plus followed by Ag. That means first the silver plus will accept the electron to become metallic silver. And that since it is accepting electron it is reduction should be cathode. So that is what I have written. So you can get the overall cell reaction from here itself. That is what is the speciality of the representation of electrochemical cell. We are going to observe few more examples, obviously, to clarify the further doubts. You write it down and it is in. Next is nickel silver nitrate. Next example is nickel. And AgNO3 cell. Here also, the first we have to write down the cell reactions. So nickel is solid. So it is nickel giving rise to nickel 2 plus, it is a bivalent one, plus 2 electron. And on the other side, again it is silver nitrate. So silver plus will accept electron will become metallic silver since two electrons are exchanged here it has to be multiplied by two to get the overall cell reaction so let me do that nickel 2 plus plus two electron it will be multiplied by two so it should be 2 ag plus plus two electron giving rise to 2 ag now it will cancel each other out like the previous case simple it is nickel plus 2 ag plus giving rise to 2 ag plus ni 2 plus i hope it is very clear 
there shouldn't be any doubt and see main thing is it is very easy to do the mistake it is too very easy to get the confusion so we have to understand that there shouldn't be any confusion because if confusion is there it will just not it will not be a small mistake because it will produce just the opposite result that we are supposed to get now if we need to write down the overall cell reaction how it will be like so this is the oxidation part so i should be writing nickel followed by nickel 2 plus then salt bridge then ag plus followed by ag solid aqueous you may or may not write but this is how it should be written so this is what i have done already we will see another case first you write it down we will see another example so if there is any confusion still left we will be doing it on the third case we will clarify that so i'm erasing now the third one it is a zinc hcl cell zinc hcl cell first of all the oxidation half reaction oxidation half reaction what it can do like the previous one zinc will lose two electron and will be like that this is the oxidation similarly hcl remember h plus and cl minus right so h plus accepts electron to become h it is very easy to understand that one h will mean nothing will mean nothing so it will do like this i hope it is clear this is obviously reduction now you can get the overall cell reaction as zn plus 2h plus giving rise to zn2 plus plus h2 what next oxidation half cell reaction and reduction half cell reaction both we have written so it is obviously cathode it is sorry it is obviously anode and it is obviously cathode so first anode should be written which i am writing zinc followed by zn2 plus then the salt bridge and in case of cathode part we should be writing h plus which is the electrolyte followed by h2 remember in case of hydrogen since it is a gaseous state and hcl is in liquid state so there is there should be electrode an electrode should be there so it is to be understood that we should be writing comma platinum because platinum is used as an electrode in case of hydrogen which is also known as standard hydrogen electrode or popularly known as she ashe we are going to discuss about it but as of now you should be writing down comma platinum so this is all about the representation of electrochemical cell now we are going to shift our attention to understand what is electrode potential and emf of a galvanic cell now we have to understand this particular topic electrode potential the main reason behind the flow of current is this one why is that the flowing of current is there we need to understand that the flow of electric current is due to an electrochemical cell which indicates that there is a potential difference so potential difference will exist between the two electrodes and to understand that potential difference the electrode potential is to be understood so to do that i have chosen a simple case of copper dipped in copper 2 plus solution say copper sulfate so for that suppose i have taken this one d 
música. And in this beaker, I have kept the copper immersed. So this is copper rod. Now, there can be three things. So to understand those three things, I'm drawing it three lines. Now, in all these cases, the metallic copper is being drawn here also. So, metallic copper is there, it is immersed in copper 2 plus solution. This is copper 2 plus solution. So, 1, 2, and 3. Three different cases. What are the possibilities now? Carefully see because this will generate your concept. Here it may be the case that there are copper 2 plus in this medium, copper 2 plus ions, it will collide with the metallic rod and will do nothing, it will remain as copper 2 plus. I hope it is visible. Here, on the next case, copper 2 plus collides with the metallic rod and it forms and it loses the electron and it forms copper, the metallic copper. Or rather you can say, after the collision, if I draw it like this it will be better. Cu2 plus loses two electron to become like that. So as you can see I have written minus two electron. And in the third case, the metallic copper loses two electron to become copper two plus. So three different cases Try to understand it carefully. In first case, copper 2 plus ions collide with the metal and do nothing. Here copper 2 plus loses 2 electron and forms metallic copper on the metallic electron. I think similar phenomena we have seen already in the Daniel cell. And here the metallic copper loses itself 2 electron and forms copper 2 plus into the solution. In all these cases, there one thing is common, especially in all these cases, one thing is common that is a separation of charge. And due to the separation of charge in electrode and solution, the potential difference is being generated. There is a generation of potential differences. And this is actually known as electrode potential. So basically we have to see the separation of charge in all these cases. And this is the main reason of the flow of electricity indirectly. So, having said that, we have to understand the, what are the possible reactions. In the first case, there is no reaction of course. Here there is no reaction. Here, 
the reaction will be copper 2 plus plus 2 electron giving rise to metallic copper and in this case it should be copper loses 2 electron forms copper 2 plus so these are the three cases which I am supposed to mention it is needless to say that we all understand that here the reduction takes place so it is reduction and it is oxidation so it will give us the opportunity to understand that actually there are two types of electrode potential one is the reduction potential one is the oxidation potential which one should happen that is also a big question I'm trying to understand is that or rather if I write here only if the tendency of metal two options one is to lose electron and coming into solution then we can turn it as first carefully see we have written if the tendency of metal is to lose electron and coming into the solution so it is tendency to get oxidized tendency to get oxidized on the other hand if we write that it accepts you should write metallics metallic ion accepts electron and forms metal then we should be writing it as tendency to get reduced tendency to get reduced so this is all about the tendency whichever whichever is prominent that one will happen if the tendency to get oxidized will be more by the metal it depends on metal which metal we are talking about so whichever is more prominent that will take place now let us represent or let us define the oxidation potential as well as reduction potential so first of all the oxidation potential and then the reduction potential it is the tendency to get oxidized and the tendency to get reduced but if we have to write that in terms of equations it will be like oxidation means metal loses n number of electron or rather I should write it becomes m n plus by losing n number of electron example zinc zn see it is 2 plus so it is 2 electron on the right hand side it is 2 electron means it is basically losing 2 electron isn't it that you try to understand it is losing 2 electron that is why it is 2 electron here similarly h2 will be 2 h plus because hydrogen is monovalent and it forms two electrons. So this is oxidation potential. Similarly, reduction potential can also be written. It should be 
m n plus plus n number of electron giving rise to n. Examples are very easy. Zn two plus copper two plus. If they accept electron, it forms zn. If it accepts electron, it forms copper. And similarly so on. So we have discussed about the electrode potential, which is the chief responsible reason for the flowing of current. And now, after understanding these two, we have to understand the parameters on which the electrode potential depends upon. So points are three things basically. It depends on three things. One is concentration of solution. Second one is nature of metal. And the third one is temperature. So nature of metal and its ions obviously is important because zinc and copper will not behave in same way. Concentration of the solution, whether it is one m, one molar, or two molar, or zero point two molar, based on that, the tendency to accept or lose electron will be depending upon, and of course the temperature. We are going to see all these things. in the form of equation in the later half of this chapter itself but these are the points on which the electrode potential of any electrode depends upon now our next topic will be the emf or cell potential of a cell so let us do that i am erasing this we are going to discuss about the emf of a cell very very famous e m f so to define that we should be remembering that electrochemical cell consists of two half cells right it consists of two half cells the electrodes in this half cells should have different potentials reduction potentials and here before moving on to this emf of the cell i should be mentioning that there are two kind of electrode potentials one is oxidation one is reduction two kind of electrode potential one is oxidation and one is reduction but then also as a convention we normally talk about the reduction potential this is the main thing so whatever values or whatever discussion from here on will take place is depending on the reduction potential so as i was discussing that electrochemical cell consists of two half cells the electrode and we will talk about reduction potentials only oxidation potential if it is calculated we will just reverse the sign we will get the reduction potential so from here on our parameter is not this one only reduction potential it is very easy to understand what is the emf of the cell the electrode having higher reduction potential will definitely have higher tendency to gain electrons if i write electrodes having higher reduction potential they will have
higher tendency to gain electron higher tendency to gain electron whereas the electrodes having lower reduction potential will have lesser tendency to gain electron so therefore the cell potential or emf arises from the difference of the tendency of these two electrodes so emf is defined as it is defined as the electrode potential of cathode minus the reduction potential or rather electrode potential means we are now talking about the reduction potentials only so emf of the cell will now be defined as electrode potential of cathode minus electrode potential of anode these two so as a representation remember the cathode is on the right hand side always so it should be written as er e right rather initially e right minus e left so it is called e cell further e cell should be written as er minus e right so this formula will be utilized from here so do write it down very very important from here on again just a recapitulation the elect from here on we are we will all discuss with the help of the reduction potential oxidation potential if it is given if we know the tendency to get oxidized is how much we will just reverse the sign and accordingly we will get the reduction potential now cathode and anode for both of them we will find out the electrode potential of both of this obviously this electrode potential you can replace easily by reduction potential because now it is the conjunction and then we should be able to write like this because the cathode is on the right hand side and the anode is on the left hand side so in order to define we should be writing the potential difference between the two electrodes potential difference between the two electrodes when i whether minimum or negligible negligible or no current is flowing through the circuit remember we have not calculated the flowing of current yet so when negligible or no current is flowing through the circuit and this is a very 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 important line you do write it down do memorize with the help of the concept obviously and it will be utilized so just a quick reminder that emf of the cell is the potential difference between the two electrodes when negligible or no current is flowing but the potential difference is the difference of the electrode when two electrodes will have the current flowing through them so this is the difference between emf versus the potential difference now how do we calculate the electrode potential how do we get these values so in chemistry for everything every such cases we take a parameter here also we take a parameter known as standard electrode potential so the next topic is standard electrode potential 
the parameter to calculate the rest of the things known as standard electrode potential. See, as I have said, to understand a half cell of an electrochemical cell as a combination of others, we have to see whether that half cell will lose electron or gain electron based on what is being joined with that particular cell. It is just a comparison only. What does it mean? If I am talking about, say, Zn2 plus Zn, Zn2 plus Zn. And if I am connecting that with A2 plus and A, which one should have greater tendency to lose electron? If zinc will have greater tendency to lose electron, so it should be on the left hand side. And if it is having greater tendency not to lose electron, but to accept electron, then it should be on the right hand side. So in that case, this will be anode and this will be cathode. I hope I am clear. But what we are doing is, we are comparing these two. We are saying that this is having higher tendency to lose a pair of electrons and it is having higher tendency to gain electrons. So we are comparing these two. Now the point is, if such is the case, when an unknown metal and its, elect its solution and electrode will be taken, how to know whether it is having greater oxidation potential or greater reduction potential or what? Remember, from here on every potential we have to think about as a parameter of reduction potential only. So whenever the poten term potential will be utilized from here on, remember it is reduction potential. So these two also can be or should be written as higher lesser tendency, you can say lesser tendency to gain electron which is just the opposite and it is the higher tendency to gain electron because we are converting each and everything in terms of reduction potential only. So whatever discussion that has taken place regarding oxidation potential, we are converting them in the way of writing the reduction potential. Now let us come to the point. There is a term called standard hydrogen electrode. We take hydrogen as a parameter. Let us see the setup first. To understand the setup, we take a container, we take this one molar HCl solution and we take a glass tube. It looks like this roughly. I'm just trying to draw it. As you know, I'm not very good at it. I'm just trying to represent a glass tube like this. looks like this from this side what happens is hydrogen gas can be bubbled through you can bubble through the hydrogen gas from this side and there is a metallic wire there is a metallic wire and it is connected to the circuit. This metallic wire, remember, there are few specifications here. It is a platinum wire. The glass tube is sealed only. There is a 
uh, foil at the end of it, which is a platinum coated foil. So it is a platinum coated one. It's a platinum one. Because although we are talking about hydrogen electrode, but an electrode should be there which is a solid one. So here we have taken platinum, which is a very, very inert metal. So we calculate what happens is at one bar atmospheric pressure, one bar atmospheric pressure and 298 Kelvin, the hydrogen gas is bubbled through. And there are two options when it when it is being done because in HCl the hydrogen is in H plus ion situation is in H plus ion and here it is the gaseous hydrogen which is non ionized so this is called because it is the standard condition it is called standard hydrogen electrode or it is also known as SHE or SHE easy to remember now there are two ways that SHE can act as anode and it can also act as cathode so as an anode as an anode it will have tendency to lose electrons so obviously H plus will not lose H2 will lose it will lose two electrons to become 2H plus and at the same point of time if it acts like this that the H plus ion present in the solution the HCl solution accepts electron and forms hydrogen gas like this, this is the opposite way, then it is definitely acting as a cathode. This tendency, it is the reduction potential. This tendency is taken as 0 0.00. This is taken as the parameter to measure others. What we do is to measure the standard electrode potential of a metal electrode, 1.0 molar solution of that electrolyte is taken in a beaker and a metal electrode is dipped into it and then she is connected, means standard hydrogen electrode is connected. As a matter of fact, we have chosen already this one as a parameter and based on that, we can actually decide that whether the given metal and its electrode will act as an anode or a cathode. So for that, let us choose. Let us choose a case where we will take copper. So just, I hope you have written it down. I have take, I will take a copper, copper electrode. From the right hand side, we know that copper According to its values, we should be knowing that copper will have greater tendency to accept electron compared to hydrogen. So I can draw it like this very, very easily. This is the solution of copper. So copper 2 plus solution. This is the metallic copper and here it is being connected. You can pick a voltmeter here to understand what is happening. In this case, if we want to write we need to understand that which one is on the right hand side. In case of E0 of cell, it should be E0 of R minus E0 of L. 
What is on the right hand side? Copper. So it should be E0 of Cu2 plus oblique Cu. Remember, we will talk about reduction potential. So first the cation followed by the metal minus E0 of H plus H2. I hope it is clear now. And we will observe in this parameter that we are getting this one as 0. Point, rather here, 0. 0.34 volt. This is the experimental observation. So then we can say that since we are taking this one as 0, 0.00 and it is 0. 0.34 volt so E0 of Cu2 plus of Cu so we can say from here E0 of Cu2 plus with Cu is equal to 0. 0.34 volt so what we have done as per the tendency of copper we have kept it on the right hand side it is acting as a cathode, it is acting as an anode. We have written that. Why metal first all the time? Because we are considering only the reduction potential. This I have mentioned in the last discussion that it is supposed to be taken as 0, 0.00. It is experimentally measured and from here only we are able to calculate E0 of copper 2 plus H by copper is 0 0.344. So that is how using standard hydrogen electrode we can actually calculate the E0 of a given electrode. So carefully write it down. This diagram is immensely important to understand the use of it. Write it down. Let us solve one or two problems related. So I'm just writing out the problem first. You also write it down. Calculate. Calculate the standard reduction potential calculate the standard reduction potential of nickel 2 plus with nickel electrode when the cell potential for when the cell potential for the cell nickel nickel 2 plus 1 M salt bridge copper 2 plus 1 molar oblique copper is 0 0.59 volt in the bracket the given information is E0 E0 of copper 2 plus with copper is 0 0.34 volt. This is the question. Now, since the cell is already given, let me rewrite. It makes our job very easy. Let us rewrite the cell. The point is, this is Oxidation, anode, reduction, cathode. So if we find, want to find out the E0 of cell, E0 of individual one electrode is given. E0 of cell is also given. We have to find out the standard electrode potential. Standard electrode potential for this one. That means we have to calculate E0 of nickel 2 plus nickel. So it is nothing but E0 of R minus E0L. R means cathode. So it is E0 of 
कॉपर टू प्लस माइनस ई जीरो ऑफ निकल टू प्लस एन आई दिस वैल्यू इज गिवन आई थिंक हाउ मच दिस वैल्यू ई जीरो फॉर दिस सेल इज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव नाइन वोल्ट सो वी शुड बी एबल टू राइट जीरो पॉइंट फाइव नाइन वोल्ट इज इक्वल टू ई जीरो ऑफ दिस इज ऑल्सो गिवन सो इट इज जीरो पॉइंट थ्री फोर वोल्ट माइनस जीरो एन आई टू प्लस नाउ दिस विल बी ऑन दिस साइड सो ई जीरो ऑफ एन आई टू प्लस टेक्निकल शुड बी जीरो पॉइंट थ्री फोर माइनस जीरो पॉइंट फाइव नाइन वोल्ट सो इट इज माइनस ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट टू फाइव वोल्ट What is the meaning of that? What is the significance of this answer? If I ask, this negative sign. This means the reduction potential of this one is negative, which also means the tendency to accept electron will be less, and the tendency to lose electron for nickel should be higher. So. See, there are so many aspects. Looking at this, we can write down this. We can write down the cell reaction. Looking at the values, we can say whether the nickel will accept electron or lose electron. Since it is a negative, negative sign, that is why we can say the tendency reduction potential is negative. So the tendency to accept electron will be less. Tendency to lose electron will be more. So this numerical tells us this all these details about how to understand the. cell representation and accordingly how to calculate the values so this is the very famous electrochemical series which uh, gives answer to so many questions see absolutely almost at the middle the hydrogen the standard hydrogen electrode is referred where 2h plus accepting two electron becomes hydrogen and its reduction potential is considered as zero here in all these cases you must have observed that the electrons are only being taken so cations are accepting electrons are forming the reduced species so all of these are actually accepting electron and accordingly we have chosen that means we are considering the reduction potentials only so obviously the species which is present above hydrogen they are having greater tendency to accept the electron and to form the reduced form so you can see all the values on the right hand side the values which are written are greater than 0 so they are accepting electron they can be reduced easily so if they are getting itself reduced they are actually oxidizing others so check the red arrow on the extreme left hand side it is written the stronger oxidizing agents as we proceed from bottom to top so we actually the species which are present at the top of this table they are better oxidizing agent so they are getting reduced easily they are accepting electrons quickly better than hydrogen so their value is more than zero and just the opposite one those who are present after hydrogen check lead 2 plus nickel 2 plus cadmium 2 plus they can accept electron but their reduction potential is less than 0 and that is why we are actually expecting them not to accept electron but to lose electron so as we proceed from top to bottom the stronger reducing agents and the weaker oxidizing agent is forming because their tendency is to lose electron getting oxidized and reduce others so you check the values carefully just above hydrogen sn plus 4 plus cu2 plus what they are doing is they can accept electron easily so they accepts electron they get itself reduced and they oxidize others so from hydrogen onwards if we go above they are better oxidizing agents and weaker reducing agents they get reduced very easily and that's why their value is more than zero whereas the reactions which you can see after hydrogen in all these cases they can accept electron but the tendency will be less so they are actually 
their tendency is to lose electron, not to accept electron. If someone loses electron, it itself get oxidized, it reduces others. So you note it down, these electrochemical series and the values which has been considered, all these are reduction potential values. Oxidation potential, though for the, for the reactions for which, or the species for which, the oxidation potential is positive, the reduction potential is negative. So all the elements, all the species, all the reactions after hydrogen, as you can see lead 2 plus, nickel 2 plus, cadmium 2 plus, their value is negative in case of oxidation potential, which means their uh, negative values in reduction potential suggest that they have got less tendency to get reduced and they have got higher tendency to get oxidized. That means they will rather lose electron and will not accept electron that easily. So this series will actually let you understand that if you take for an example copper 2 plus and if you take nickel 2 plus it is obvious that copper is situated above hydrogen so it will be reduced. It is having positive reduction potential and it will act as an anode sorry cathode and whereas lead which is below hydrogen nickel which is below hydrogen will act as an anode because they are having greater tendency to lose ex electron rather than to accept it. So we need to understand this table very very carefully. Although nowadays whatever question that will be asked the values will be given. So values you need to understand. So in short if we need to understand the calculation of EMF of the cell I have already written down. First is two half cell reaction should be written. Then remember this part very carefully we have to balance the electrons and we have to get the final equation. Obviously from the final equation we will get those species which will lose electron we will get that species which will gain electron. Obviously the species that will lose electron say for an example zinc loses two electron to become Zn2 plus so obviously it will be anode and if you can remember copper 2 plus accepts two electron to become metallic copper so that will be cathode. So then cathode and anode, cathode is on the right hand side, anode is on the left hand side and E0 term is given only if it is in standard condition. So then E0 cell will be written, it is E0R minus E0L. So this is how from the EMF we can actually calculate the E0 of cell. We had already discussed but this is the stepwise understanding of these four. So these are to be followed. Do write it down carefully. After understanding the electrochemical series and knowing that how the E0 of cell can be calculated, we are now in a situation to discuss this one. Very, very important. Predicting the feasibility of a chemical reaction. Feasibility. What does it mean? It means whether a chemical reaction will take place spontaneously or not. We can get that from the electrochemical data itself. So for that, there is a simple rule. A reaction will be feasible only if the species which has the higher reduction potential is reduced. The species which has higher reduction potential is reduced. In other words, we can also say this, that the species to release electrons must have lower electrode potential as compared to the species which accepts electrons. So, or you can say the species which will Suppose this, we write it just the opposite way, the species which will accept electron. Accept electron. Accepting electron means getting reduced. So it should have a 
greater electrode potential remember again this electrode potential is nothing but same as reduction potential because from here on oxidation potential will not be discussed much electrode potential whenever i am mentioning it is automatically that it is a reduction potential so the species which will accept electron should have greater reduction potential or electrode potential compared to the species which loses electron so this is the rule actually now let us see by choosing one reaction whether we are saying correct thing or not so you write it down first then i will erase now let us choose one reaction the reaction is copper 2 plus plus 2 ab giving rise to copper plus 2 ab plus we have to find out whether at all this reaction takes place or not so first thing first we are going to observe the electrochemical series data which is already uploaded into this video so for copper it is 0.34 volt and for silver it is 0.80 volt carefully see to these two data on one side you are having the value of copper e0 values of course 0.34 volt what are e0 values so which one is having the question is higher reduction potential which one is having answer is this one so if this one is having higher reduction potential we can easily say that it should have higher tendency to lose or gain reduction potential is higher higher tendency to get reduced so accept electron and as a result the equation should be ag plus plus electron giving rise to ag on the other side copper compared to these two should be just the opposite way because copper is having the value 0.34 so it is having lesser tendency if it is having lesser tendency compared to this so if this is reduced this will be oxidized so copper will lose two electrons to become this one these are the two basic equations we are getting these values from these this we are getting these equations from these two values only i hope it is clear i have tendency to accept electron so it it is here now we have to multiply this one by 2 this one so i can rewrite ag plus plus 2 electron giving rise to 2 ag whereas copper losing copper 2 plus plus 2 electron now we will cancel these two it will become ag plus plus sorry it should be 2 2 ag plus plus copper giving rise to 2 ag plus copper this is the final equation is it the same that we are getting just a minute it should be 2 plus is it the same that we are getting see this was copper 2 plus plus 2 ag which is on the right hand side so we are just getting the opposite values opposite equation remember this we are getting considering all these informations so this is correct so it is the opposite reaction which is favored not this one so this is 
not a spontaneous reaction. The answer of us should be no. It is not a feasible reaction. So what we have to do? Check the two values, get the higher values, higher tendency to accept electron that will be reduced. So accordingly write that, write the opposite one in opposite way, get the final equation, match it with the original one, whichever is given, match it with the question. If you, both of them are same, then obviously this one will be feasible. If not same, then it is not feasible. So that is how we will find it out. I expect all of you to go through all this because a lot of things have been discussed today. And based on that, problems, conceptual, numericals, everything will be discussed from here on.